Hello, my name is Teacher Lindsay, and I typically make niche videos for online ESL teachers on how to make their classroom experience more exciting and engaging for their students. Well, with the rest of the world also joining us in the virtual classroom setting, I want to share with you some tips and tricks on how to make your Zoom call with your students or participants more exciting. Welcome to my virtual classroom. Hello. So today I want to talk about utilizing Zoom's built-in features as well as connecting with a video software, SparkleCam. I also want to talk about how to use the screen share feature in order to create interactive slides, worksheets, and collaborative documents so that you and your participants can work on them at the same time during a live classroom setting. All right, so let's get started. First, you want to sign into Zoom. You want to go to host if you are hosting a meeting. Okay, so we're going to open up our Zoom meetings. Okay, and so your Zoom meeting is going to appear on your screen. It will auto default to a size depending on your screen. Obviously, Zoom uh, is different on every device that you use and it will function slightly differently and as far as the placement of different features um, will change depending on what device that you're using. Um, as you can see, the quality on the Zoom call is is okay. It's not as, as good as some of the other um, software programs, but typically people are looking at a very small box. So I have a very large computer screen, so it does appear a little bit more pixelated. When you log in to the Zoom call, you're going to want to make sure to unmute your microphone. Um, most people probably aren't using a microphone. Um, if you do have a microphone, you want to make sure that you select the proper device. And the same applies with your video as well. So Zoom has a few features that you can use to create fun backgrounds. So I'm going to click the up arrow and we're going to go to video settings. Here in video settings, you have a few options here. You want to focus on this virtual background. And here in the virtual background, you can select different backgrounds to use. And here we go. So this is one of the built-in backgrounds. I've since updated, I've uh, added a few backgrounds. And this is um, separate from a green screen. So it works fairly well. The, the thing is you don't wanna, <laughs> you don't wanna move too much. Um, but if you're fairly stable, um, it, it, it does a pretty nice job really. So, and you can change your background. You can also create, um, use videos if you want to give it a little bit more of a vibrant um, feel in the background. Okay, so I think these are a lot of fun. They do work pretty well. Um, ah, I'm an ant. Don't eat me. <laughs> so I think this is definitely one way of making Zoom a lot more fun where you can pick and choose what backgrounds that you like. All right, now I, of course, ah, I, of course, have a green screen. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I use my green screen. Okay, so this here <laughs> is a software card called SparkoCam. So I really like SparkoCam to use with Zoom. I actually use a few different programs for my job um, teaching online ESL students. I typically use OBS, which is the open broadcasting software. And I use that because I can do a lot of features with it. Now, I, I will say that uh, OBS, there is a little bit more of a learning curve with it, um, but it's not too bad. It's a program I really love to use. I think for Zoom, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I do with SparkleCam. I like SparkleCam a little bit better with Zoom. However, I need to tell you that SparkleCam does cost money. So if that's something that you're wanting to um, add to your rep repertoire, I think it's a fun uh, addition. It's not that expensive. So I'll provide the link to SparkleCam below. Now also please keep in mind that I do not get paid for any of this, uh, <laughs> any of these recommendations. I'm just another broke teacher, okay? So I'm not getting any money for any of these recommendations. It's just what I personally have found that I really like and what I personally use in my classroom to make it a little bit more fun. So this is SparkleCam. 
Okay, so here on SparkleCam, you add yourself and then you have your background. If you want to change your background, you just highlight the background box here. And um, all right, you go down to device and you want to select picture. And then you're going to just upload any background that you are wanting to use. You could just have some neutral backgrounds. Okay. So there's a lot of fun things you can do here. Look, if you want to teach, say you're teaching classes on different subjects, you can have your background theme to the subject. Maybe you're talking about, you know, fish and how fish breathe or something. You can have your backgrounds uh, set to whatever that you want. It's really exciting. It's really fun. And it, the students will, will like seeing you in kind of a different setting. Um, some other really cool features on this program is that you can create effects. Okay, so say your student's not paying attention. Hey, you, Billy. I see you. Pay attention. <laughs> no. Yeah, don't scare your students. So these are all um, just transparent... Um, PNG images that I've uploaded and then you can edit them here using this mask so it's really really easy to use you just add whatever you want so you upload it and then you can modify it to fit create oh, and that's that's basically how simple it is super easy it recognizes your face it's very easy I've, I've used a lot of different programs um, how to do this and this uh, sparkle cam is the easiest to upload uh, these special effects and features so I really like it for this reason okay so now I'm going to add myself to the zoom call as the participant okay so now I've logged in as the participant, so I'm just going to set this here. Um, and this way I can show you how it works between the moderator and the participant using Zoom and how we can pair Zoom with Google software in order to create a more interactive classroom. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you. Um, so on here, I'm, we'll just do this basic worksheet. And basically, this is just a worksheet I found online. And I'm wanting to create so that me and the participant can work on it together. So we're going to go to share screen. And we're going to go to, I'll show you the advanced setting. So you will have to select, um, you can do one participant can share at a time. Multiple participants can share simultaneously. It depends on how much control you want to give over to your, your students. So I, typically if you're working one-on-one -on -one or one on a few, um, you probably can give those students or those participants more agency over the learning. So it's up to you. You have that option. Okay, now we're going to go to share screen. And here I have kind of a lot going on on my desktop, but we're going to, I want to share this here. This is the document I'm wanting to share. Okay, now, so as you can see, all your participants will be shown on your screen. You can move these around if you want them to be, um, depending on what your preference is. So, so now your worksheet, whatever is highlighted in green here is what you are working on. And now I'm going to show you here. This is what your participant is seeing here. Okay. All right. So you have your worksheet and then you can work on it together. You want to go ahead and select annotate and then this will create the annotate box. And now as a participant, I have access to annotate the document. So then your student. So I'm go ahead and I'm the student here. Okay, so I will do select. I'm selecting the writing tool and I'm going to change the color to blue. Okay, so I want nine. Okay, and so that's now showing up here. 
on the screen. All right, so go ahead and you can star it. There's also little stamps that you can use too if the student gets it right. So you can stamp them, okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop share, let's see. And let's see, let's share maybe a little bit more basic. Okay, so here once again, both the student and the teacher. So here's the student's view on their phone. Okay, they, they can see it. If you allow for the annotate, so the annotate box will come up and now the student can then use this, this slide that you created in Google Slides and they can go ahead and connect it. Okay, and then you can show. Oh, let's look at this one. G, big G, small G. Okay. So the teacher can then show them the correct answer. And then you can go ahead and clear. You can go ahead and erase that line and then the student can work on writing the correct answer. There you go. Then you can add little stamps. Yay! Good job, good job, good job. Something to keep in mind when you are deciding to screen share a Google Doc um, such as this Google presentation, there are three ways to share it. You can sh simply share your screen here showing um, your construction view when you construct your slides. You can go ahead and share it um, presenter option making sure to select exit full screen or in this way here or you can go ahead and share it if you click on this down arrow presenter view and now presenter view will give you a view of your presenter notes and it will show you upcoming slides and your audience on zoom will only see the presentation box so this is a really great way of presenting your presentations and the participants in the Zoom meeting will only see the presenter slide. Here's another way of doing it. Okay, so let's create a new document. All right, we'll do, say we're in a meeting with our coworkers and we're wanting to brainstorm together. Okay, brainstorming ideas for project, project number one, okay. Idea, idea, okay. So you can go ahead and then share this to whoever is your participants and you can add in their email. You can also create um, email groupings as well. So you can go ahead and send that and then you wanna make sure that they can edit it. And so go ahead and copy the link and then you can go back into your Zoom meeting and now you can give this, you can share this via email or you can also share it via the chat box. So I will show you how to do it today. So I'm gonna go to more, I'm gonna open up my chat box. Your chat box may already be opened. Um, so go ahead and share the link out. Okay, now as a participant, I'm going to click on the link. This is what Okay, so it's highlighted in green. This is what the participants are seeing, just like here on my phone, or you can't see, let's see. Here, as a participant, that's what I'm seeing, although my camera is frozen. <laughs> so let me type in my idea. Okay, and it's showing what participant is typing, so that's me typing. All right, so I'm adding, I'm contributing to the document, and we're also having a conversation um, on Zoom. And now we can talk about the ideas. Oh, I really like that idea, I like this idea, let's add to that, and we can do it all in pretty much real time. So this is a really great tool. Like I said, it's only, it's gonna give you the option 
of um, sharing what you want to share. Now, if you just want to, if you want more control over the document and you don't want people to be able to edit your document, you can just share it and then you can just do the annotate feature um, here and then people can annotate it and add things to it, but not necessarily modify it as much as you would be able to modify it. So that's some of the ways that you can make Zoom more interactive for your participants, for your students, for your friends, for your family. There's a lot you can do. Basically any program, um, basically anything on your desktop, you can screen share and then you can either choose to allow editing privileges to the participants or you can allow annotation privileges so that people can write on the um, screen share like as kind of like an overlay so it's up to you what you want to do there's a lot of fun things you can do on zoom it's a fairly simple program um, get a little bit glitchy sometimes it depends on the capacity of your device that you're on obviously if a phone is not going to be quite as robust as if the other person's on a computer there's a lot more you can do on a computer maybe a little bit less lag depending on the processing abilities of your device um, but you can still do a lot. Like I said, I was just using my phone. I'm recording right now, like I'm doing a lot right now. And it was pretty simple and easy to do. If you have any questions, please let me know below. Like and subscribe for more information and content about how to use technology in your classroom. Goodbye.